Hey guys, so today we're gonna to talk about the best way to nail chord changes. This is something that I get asked about a lot uh, in the comments here on YouTube and in general on social media. So I'm gonna go in depth on one of the topics that I cover in a full masterclass that I just did and released on Jazz Lesson videos. That full masterclass is called Practicing Standards. And if you do wanna check out that masterclass, there's over an hour of content with me breaking down my step-by-step -step process for practicing standards. So essentially on there, I go through every element of a standard, everything from understanding the melody and how the chord changes function, to playing material that outlines the chord changes, and even using rhythmic exercises to practice getting through a set of chord changes. There's also content in there about how I use melodic chromaticism, like approach notes and enclosures to play through chord changes. And there's other stuff as well. So I really made sure to cover every step that I really go through when I'm practicing a standard or any set of chord changes really. So if you're really serious about getting into this stuff, I definitely recommend checking that out. But in the meantime, today, we're gonna go through one of the things that I get into in that masterclass, and that's going to be using chord tones to really nail chord changes. A lot of people don't realize how good you can sound and really how important it is to make sure you're going through different methods of just using chord tones in your improvisation. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And just real quick before we get into that, just wanna tell you I'm really excited that next month uh, we're gonna be doing a virtual saxophone workshop. It's gonna run through International Saxophone Day, which is November 6th, which of course is Adolf Sax's birthday. And if you don't already know, Adolf Sax was the inventor of the saxophone. Fun little side note, when I toured through St. Louis a few years ago, I went to the Sax Museum where I actually played a horn that was made by Adolf Sax himself, which was really cool. So for this virtual saxophone workshop, it's gonna be really amazing. We've got so many awesome people giving master classes for the workshop. Some of the saxophonists giving master classes include Melissa Aldana, Walter Smith III, Leo P, Grace Kelly, Derek Brown. We've got Nathan Graybill, also known as Saxologic, giving a master class on how to practice, which is gonna be all about the lessons that he's learned as a college student majoring in jazz studies. And again, that's just some of the people giving master classes at the workshop. So it's gonna be really awesome if you're a saxophonist, make sure to check it out. And we've actually got a coupon code in the description here that you can use to get $50 off full access to the workshop. All right, so now let's jump into this concept of using chord tones to really nail chord changes and really seeing how much we can do with just those chord tones. You can play some awesome material and even lines using just the chord tones. And maybe more importantly, it's just going to make you hear the chord changes better and ultimately be able to improvise a lot better just by going through this process. We always have to remember that a lot of the subjects and topics that we practice and a lot of the processes that we go through while we're practicing help us improve our skills as a musician, which naturally makes us improvise and solo a lot better. So that's very much the case here. We're gonna get into some cool tricks where you can really make the chord tones sound awesome. But you have to remember with this process, it's also something that's just gonna make you a better musician. And so the process that we'll get into now and really everything that I cover in the full masterclass that I've done on practicing standards and chord changes in general, it will help us improve on things that we might not even realize as we're starting it. For instance, really being able to nail chord tones and going through this process is going to make it so you don't really get lost anymore when you're playing through a set of chord changes. You're really gonna have a handle of where you are in the form 
throughout. And also for more advanced players, trust me, you are not above this process because I can't tell you how many even advanced college students that I've found are really held back getting to the next level because they haven't spent enough time practicing chord tones. So this is important stuff for every musician at every level. So if you're a pianist or a guitarist, you're of course already playing chord tones when you just practice chords. But it's important to know that just through playing monophonic lines, single note lines, in other words, using chord tones, that's going to be a really important process for you as well. Because just because you can play the chords doesn't mean that you can actually phrase really cool single note lines using chord tones. And if you're a horn player like myself, it is of course even more important that you're gonna be practicing with chord tones because you won't be going through the process of actually playing chords on your instrument. And so this is really how we get the sound of chord changes in our ears. So the first step is straightforward. We're just going to play the arpeggios through a standard. You can do this with a backing track. You can do this with just a metronome, but you definitely want to do this with a consistent pulse. That might sound basic to some of you, but I find that sometimes even players who really can play a lot of material on their instrument can't actually do something as simple as just arpeggiating through the chord changes of a song. And when someone who's really a world-class musician is listening to a player like that, they're not gonna be fooled. They're going to identify the weaknesses of the player who actually doesn't have some nuts and bolts mechanics together to be able to really fluidly play through chord changes. And honestly, even a layperson, even a non-musician can really hear the difference when someone is really embellishing the harmony and playing clearly through the harmony. You can feel that even as a non-musician, someone can identify with that feeling of someone really nailing the harmony. All right, so let's check out the standard there will never be another you to arpeggiate through because this standard has a lot of very cool harmonic devices. Again, if you wanna understand more about how chord changes function, that's something that you can check out in the full masterclass that I did on practicing standards. But for now, we're just going to arpeggiate through each chord using the one, three, five, seven chord tone. All right, so arpeggiating like that, that's gonna sound like this. Then from there, we can actually make that exercise a lot hipper by going up through the nine and then coming back down. And then when we do that, we can end up playing continuous eighth notes. And so now that we've gotten the hang of playing straight up and down the chord tones, now we can mix up the shape a bit. Like for instance, you could play these first four bars with the shape being one, five, three, seven. So starting on the root, going up to the fifth, stepping down to the third, and then jumping up to the seventh. And that would sound like this. All right, so again, you can get more detail on this stuff in the full masterclass. But once you get more flexible with mixing up the shapes, then you can start mixing up the rhythms and just fully improvising with the chord tones. So if you work through that process, you'll actually be able to make just the chord tones sound really awesome. So now I'll give an example of that. I'm gonna play just the chord tones, the one, three, five, seven, and nine, or you could think of the nine as a two, through There Will Never Be Another You. All 
then beyond just using the chord tones to improvise with, you can start using the full scales that are associated with every chord. Then once you're doing that, you can really sound extremely fluid getting through the chord changes, and it's really an important thing to be practicing. And so that's gonna sound like this. All right, so that technique is something that I get into more in the Practicing Standards Masterclass, so you can check out that full masterclass on jazzlessonvideos.com if you wanna get really serious about this stuff. Again, in that masterclass, I go through my step-by-step -step process for practicing through chord changes. So there are a bunch of different topics that I get into there, as I said earlier. So approach notes and enclosures through standards, as well as voice leading techniques and rhythm exercises and just all sorts of stuff. So definitely make sure to check that out if you're really serious about getting better at playing through chord changes and full sets of chord changes through standard forms. We've got a link in the description and there's a coupon code that you can use there. So make sure to check that out if you wanna get this. And as always, thanks so much for watching the content today. I hope you learned something from this and please let me know what you want me to cover next. As I mentioned in recent videos, I am making more content while I'm off tour right now. And so I would love to know what you guys want to learn more about next. All right, so make sure to click subscribe if you haven't already and just hit that bell next to the subscribe button, which will give you notifications whenever I release something new. So we'll make sure that you don't miss any of this content. And again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.